Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for coming back to another episode of the Fizzness Shizness Podcast. My name is Rob, and let's just jump right into it. I'm at the end, almost done with a book that I've been working on for quite a while. The concept of this book is each chapter, I talk about a lie that I had created in my life and believed so much to the point where it had robbed me of joy, happiness, living a better life, living a fuller life. Each chapter walks through a different one of these lies and how they impacted me over the years. My hope there is that somebody else will read these and say, oh, I, I know some of these feelings. I've told myself, help people get out of some of the holes that they find themselves in. And my, my most recent chapter I was working on was a chapter about feeling like a burden to the world and everybody in it. And it was weird as I was writing this chapter out, what I thought was originally me telling a story about my past because of the way it was emotionally difficult for me to navigate through each sentence and every paragraph that I was writing, I realized it wasn't about my past anymore, that these were very much still feelings that I had now four decades later. And that surprised me a bit. Whenever I was a kid, two years old, my birth mother gave up, she relinquished parental rights to myself and my younger sister. And luckily my dad remarried to somebody that, that adopted the both of us. But going through something like that at such a young age, like a lot of us do, sets a very difficult tone for how you perceive yourself for the rest of your life. Because one of the two people that were supposed to care the most and be the most connected to you and see the best in you, one of them decided they could not see enough to keep me around or my sister. Whenever I was you know, three, four, five years old, I remember very distinctly being so cool about it. <laughs> I remember being like, it's not a big deal, stuff happens. Like very sort of cordial and passive about it. Meanwhile, my younger sister struggled emotionally. It was always more difficult for her to talk about and deal with, she always asked questions. And I saw how those adults in our lives reacted to her when she would raise concerns, questions, or emotionally be struggling, crying. It made their lives more difficult. And I could see that they had to go out of their way in order to pacify or walk her through or console her in those moments. And I didn't want to be that. I perceived that as being a burden. And I had already been shown that being a burden can lead to people essentially not wanting you around anymore. So for me, I smiled a lot. I became a good kid. At the time, I thought I was just a good kid. Now I realize it was much, much more than just being a good kid. I began to create processes for myself to help reinforce my chances of not being discarded. It wasn't just about being a good kid anymore. I remember being at church and, and other people telling me how good of a kid I was, but I knew they were saying that because of how I was acting. I didn't talk to people. I was very, very quiet and shy. I kept my head down. I didn't make a lot of eye contact. And I just kind of stayed out of people's way. I wanted to be invisible, not because I didn't want to be seen, but because I didn't want to be rejected. So I got real good at being that kid. And, a time, and over time, that eventually evolved into creating works around the, the good behavior. I was a really good door holder when people needed to come out of the doors at church. My dad always told me, you always hold the doors, but man, I, I was real adamant about holding those doors. I wanted to do enough so that whenever they realized that I was not worth having around, they could at least go, but he is a good door holder. We'll keep him for now. That's all that I wanted. I wasn't asking for people to love me. Hell, I wasn't even asking for people to like me. I just didn't want to be rejected again. My dad was in a church softball league and after one of the games, they went to a local Hardee's restaurant. Church softball league guys don't go for beer. They go for fries and shakes. And I remember there was a guy there on the team named Mark. And I didn't really have a relationship with Mark. He went to the church, but you know, I, I had known him since I was a little kid, but he's just another adult there. But for whatever reason, I took it upon myself to, to get Mark the biggest root beer that they had to offer her at Hardee's. It was so big, I remember holding with both hands. He didn't ask for a root beer. I, don't even, I probably didn't even talk to him while I was there. But I got it for him anyways, because to me, it was a gift. 
That way, if Mark decided he didn't want me around, he could say, well, at least he got me a root beer. So I remember walking up to him and, and offering it in some form or fashion, and Mark was not interested in this insanely too large size root beer. And to Mark, what he was doing was saying no thanks to a root beer, but what I perceived it as what he was saying no thanks to me. And that was a bit of a problem because that was one of my main ways that I was trying to defend myself, keeping myself away from the risk of being a burden to people. So I had to up my game. I became incredibly passive aggressive with everybody around me. Somebody was talking to me about something that I did not agree with. I would sound incredibly agreeable so as not to cause them discomfort or pain. I was lucky that they were even spending time with me and hadn't thrown me to the side of the road yet. So I'm shaking my head yes a lot. Every relationship that I went into, I went into it as the inferior partner because I wasn't willing to risk abandonment, abandonment by expressing opinions or to being aggressive with anything that I was doing with my opinions or, or thoughts. I needed to stay out of the way as much as possible. But at the same time, I still wanted the closeness of those relationships. I did want to be loved, but I didn't want to be a burden. It's tough when every single relationship that you walk into, you are behind the eight ball before it even starts. Because now you've set a tone for your relationship of, of how you are going to act. It means it makes it very difficult for you to ever express your opinion or your thoughts on anything because then all of a sudden you've changed, at least according to the other person. Where is this coming from? Well, it turns out you wanted to talk all along, but you were much more fearful of them realizing of how much of a piece of you were and not wanting you around anymore. Of course, that's not true, but it's easy to believe. It was pretty wild whenever I'm writing this chapter out, thinking about how all of these things had changed or had impacted me in my past. I realized that there are some things in life that you do not heal from, that they just never stop. For me, feeling like a burden to the world and everybody in it is one of those things. I thought whenever I was younger that eventually that I would be able to claim victory over it, that it would be defeated. Like, that's gone. And I waited around a lot of years for that feeling to come that I had won before actually pursuing a better life. It turns out that there are things that you never actually get over. And if you end up waiting around for those things to be gone in your life, you end up waiting an entire lifetime for something that's never going to come and end up handcuffing yourself from being able to pursue a better and happier life. So how did I get around it? How did I, how did I move on from it? I look for the silver linings in my life that are good, that prove the opposite of what I feel about myself otherwise. Like whenever my wife smiles at me because I say something funny, or maybe sometimes she just smiles at me strangely because it seems like she likes me, that's a big silver lining for me. Whenever I look at the Christmas and birthday cards that I've accumulated in my top drawer of my dresser for my kids over the past two decades, the silver lining for me. Whenever I have a friend that reaches out simply to talk about music or St. Louis Cardinal baseball, they're not doing that because I'm a burden. They're doing that because it turns out maybe they like me a little bit. That's a silver lining for me. I look for those things in my life to run parallel with the feeling of being a burden. I realize the burden feeling is not going to go anywhere. But what I can do is I can learn to build a life with a lot of silver linings in it, despite feeling like that. There's enough bright spots in my life that whenever I put them together, it makes it very hard to see the side of being a burden anymore. I know that it's there, but it does make me appreciate my silver linings quite a bit more. A lot of us go through that, that feeling of being a burden. Sometimes we feel like we can't win with anybody, that everybody looks down on us, that everybody thinks that we're inferior. For me, that was a, a reality that I created myself and reflected onto others, assuming that they felt the same way. I let one thing impact the rest of my life.
the thing that happened for me to me at two years old, I assume that the world must feel like that because that was my world. Turns out that's not exactly how things were. So what I'd say to you is if you're feeling like that, if you're feeling like you are a burden to the world and everybody that is within it, or maybe even just to a few people, that's okay. I feel like that too. But what you can do, instead of waiting for that feeling to go away before you're able to move forward and build a life that actually has a few smiles in it and maybe a little bit of happiness, you can start building those things anyways. Look for the silver linings. Look for that person that smiles at you for no reason whatsoever. Look for the things that shine so bright that it's hard to see anything else. I promise you are probably not a burden.